Welcome to module four, where we're going to learn how to evaluate resources online and how to search online. So we're going to go back to our lip guide. Remember, scroll down on the library website, click where it says library research guide, type your instructor's last name, and it's right there, the second hit, the historical film analysis. So we're going to go to the tab that says websites first. I'm going to show you how to go into Google and create your own search. However, there are also pre-selected websites on your LibGuide that have been approved by your history instructor, Dr. Melissa Smacher, that you can use for any of your assignments in, your, in her class, like the American Historical Association, digitalhistory.com, uh, Real American History, the Library of Congress. So if you're doing a search here, we've been doing Gilded Age as an example. So you can just type Gilded Age using your Boolean operator quotes. And you're going to skip the first hit to set add in there somewhere. So if it says add, just keep it. Scroll down a little bit or sponsor. And anything below this line are the actual results. So what I did there, it's a custom Google search box that will search all those websites listed on your lip guide instead of you having to click one by one by one. So again, anything below the line will be the results of your search. Anything above will be sponsored or ads uh, by Google. So skip those and then just go below the line. Overview of the Gilded Age from Digital History, and they will give you the information about the Gilded Age. We've seen on the previous module, it was named after a book by Mark uh, Twain. So you can see uh, more about the history, get additional information related to it. The difference between websites or open web and our online databases is that there's no one click to get your citation or a pre-formatted citation. So please make sure you watch module five where I'm going to teach you how to use little tools on how to search websites. Right now, I'm just going to show you how to search on the web and how to evaluate the resources. Anything on this page on the lip guide of the websites listed there, you don't have to worry so much about evaluation. Like I mentioned before, they have been already pre-approved by your instructor, they're curated by me, a librarian. So you don't have to worry to see if they're cre uh, credible resources, if they have the authority, anything along those lines. So you can use them and we're gonna learn on the next module how to cite them. So any of those are good to go without you having to worry. If you choose to go just into plain Google and do a search, we're going to open another window, go to Google, and I'm going to do my same search that I was doing right now, Gilded H, in quotes. Sally, I'm going to do it without the quotes first so you can see the difference. Gilded H without any Boolean operator, any additional keywords, it's giving me 59,900,000 results. That's a lot to go through. And right now the first hit, it's related, it's relevant, but it's a series from HBO that just came out recently about the Gilded Age. I haven't seen it, so I can't recommend it. But if you have the time, I mean, it would be something there. Wikipedia, nothing wrong with Wikipedia. You can use it as long as you use it carefully. If you choose to use Wikipedia, what I recommend, if you found something interesting in there, go and look at their sources. For example, here, if you click on one, it'll tell you what the source is. Instead of citing Wikipedia, Go to the main source and evaluate it and see if it if the source is reliable and has the authority. And I'm going to show you a few tools that we recommend or use in the library to evaluate resources. But just so you know how many hits you got there and that you would have to scroll over and over again. This is one of the sites that I recommended. Now you know it's a good source. But before that, you didn't know, and you would have to scroll down and, and go through so many pages before you can find something reliable or good. So again, 59 million and 100. I'm going to add the quotes now. If I add the quotes, 
it's gonna go down from 59 million to 28 million. 28,800. Okay, now you can see it went down significantly just by adding the quotes. We were talking about in our previous uh, module that I was doing a search on Gilded Age and labor unions. So now it's down to 300,000 results versus that 59 plus million that we started with. Why? Because I'm using Boolean operators. I'm being more specific and using additional keywords. So that's very important when you're doing, we go back to kind of your module one, your search strategy, you use the right keywords. Google will do whatever you tell it to do. It is very smart and artificial intelligent. However, whatever you ask for, that's what you're going to get. The better you know your topic, the better you build your search strategy, the better results you're going to get. So Gilded Age and labor unions and Boolean operators. I have two keywords or two key terms that I made, made them one key term with my quotes and you combine them with my Boolean operator and, and now I'm significantly down to 310,000 results. That's the first way you can filter some information. The other thing you can do is filter by domain. If I add sci colon GOV will only give me government resources. Since I'm looking for U.S. history resources, that's very valid because GOV will be the U.S. government. And the U.S. government has a lot of repositories uh, in the Library of Congress, within their websites, that you can find reliable resources that have the authority to speak on the subject. When I say authority, I mean they have the credentials because it's a, the government talking about its own history. It's um, a historian, someone with the credentials, like Dr. Smacher has a doctor degree in history. So she has the credentials to evaluate this website and to tell you which one it's accurate or not, uh, if they have the authority to be publishing US history related, inf related information or not. So that's what I'm talking about authority. So now we're down to 1,200 manageable compared to the 59 million. And now I know these are all reliable resources without using any evaluation tools or doing much. So if you're in a rush, this is what I highly recommend. And then the other one is EDU. EDU will be higher education websites like El Paso Community College, University of Texas at El Paso, and other credible universities. So Sometimes with this one, you have to be careful. Some of them might be blocks. It might be an instructor that doesn't have the ex best expertise, but for the most part, 99%, they're usually good um, entries, good articles, good blogs. So I would still be more confident than the .com or just the open webs doing a random search. Again, we have the, you hear the digital history, and many other resources that have both of my key terms, labor unions and Gilded Age. So those are two ways you can filter information by using your Boolean operators, narrowing with additional keywords and um, filtering by domain, whether it's edu or .gov. Okay, we're gonna go back to the libguide and now I'm gonna move from the tab from websites we're going to go back to the libguide and now I'm going to move from the tab from websites to the tab that says type of sources and evaluation. I mentioned before, if you're unsure whether it's a valid, credible website, if the publishing institution or author have the credentials to be publishing information related to U.S. history, then these tools will help you how to evaluate those sources. I'm going to scroll down. First of all, we have on the top type of sources. We have primary sources and we have secondary sources. Primary sources will be considered original research, original information. It could be an interview, 
and but mainly it will be our scholarly uh, resources that are peer review. And we would say peer review, that means they have the credentials and the authority to review the work of another author. For example, there's a historian that writes a journal article, it's his original research, that goes through a very thorough peer review process that can take from three months to three years to review. That peer review committee is made of people that have the authority, that have a PhD, a master's degree in history, or any related topic. If it talks about labor unions, they might be another expert on labor unions or human resources or anything along those lines. So there's all experts on the field. If it's a literature review, more than likely there's a librarian involved in the process to make sure it comes from credible resources that they did uh, explore all the available online databases. So that's why we put so much weight and credibility on primary resources. Secondary resources will be also other interviews when they're published. If they're quotes, whoever it's quoting the main person, then it becomes a secondary source. When you read a newspaper, what do you hear usually? According to the police, according to the spokesperson. So it's secondary sources. They're not the main source. They're citing someone else. The same happens with magazines. Usually they tell you, oh, do, drinking this will help you and benefit because they're citing probably another study or journal article or they're citing a celebrity, so they become secondary sources. Just kind of a brief introduction to those two. And below you have three uh, tools that can help you evaluate resources. The first one is a SIF method. We're going to go through that one. The second one is a CRAB worksheet. And the third one is your fact checking toolbox. These are websites that help you fact check different things. And I'm not going to cover those in details, but I'm going to leave them there. And that would be especially for current events. If you hear something going on, then you can fact check to see if it's true or not. OK, so but I wanted to give you the option to have that again, more for current issues, but I want you to be aware that it exists. SIF method and crab worksheet are very similar for this, but I want you also to know that they're available, but for this uh, module, we're going to focus on the SIF method. What is a SIF method? It helps you to think about the source that you're about to use. Stop and think, and that's the first thing. Stop and ask and think about it before you share the article, the video, or react strongly to a headline. Pause and ask yourself and become a fact checker. To investigate a claim, start by Googling it. Are you familiar with the website or information source? What do you know about the reputation of the website or the truthfulness of the claim being made? What else have they written before? What is the purpose of their website? Are they trying to influence you? Do you consider cognitive bias in there? And second step, investigate the source before you even read. Look up the source using a reference source like Credo Reference, what do other sources say about your source? Try a fact checking site, and that's why I provide the list on the right hand side. What about the author? What are his or her credentials, their background, their expertise? And is the article worth your time? OK, and again, this is applicable for any information you consume. We consume information on a daily basis. Sometimes we speak to someone and we start telling them, oh, I've been having a headache and they tell you, well, drink this pill, drink this water. Who is this person? Is, are they in the medical field? Are they a nurse? What are their credentials to be prescribing you something or advising you something? Maybe a remedy that worked for them, but doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Always stop, think, and investigate. We consume information on a daily basis from coworkers, from family, from classmates, uh, TV, through music, what we read, we consume information every single day, every minute of the day. So always be more mindful of the information that you consume and analyze it before you even spend a whole hour reading a book or an article. Is it worth it? Is it valuable? Who's writing this and what's the purpose? Find better coverage. Do trusted sources have a similar claim? Can you find better coverage, trusted in depth or varied? Scan sources for expert consensus about this claim. 
Also, trace the original source or context. Like I mentioned, Wikipedia is a great example for this. It's better to trace the original source or the, or the context. If not a primary source, can you find the original source? What is the original context? Context is always relevant, especially if you're doing a topic about labor unions. It's not the same labor unions back in the 1800s as it is today. It's not the same labor unions in the US as it is in Europe. So context is always important. Has it been accurately reported or presented? Images, video, and media can also be altered, especially now with AI, artificial intelligence and they can be taken out of context or misrepresented. So always investigate the source that it's a valid media. Do a Google reverse image search. If you put the Google in the search box, I mean the image in the Google search box, it can locate the original source and tells you if it was altered. And if it was altered, more than likely there's other stories about it that it's been altered before. Back check the video to see if a video has been altered or manipulated. Google the title of the video and you will find many reputable news sources. Back check the video and determine whether or not it had been manipulated. In this is this information likely true? Is there a better source for this information? Why and where? So always again, ask those questions to yourself. I'm going to go really quick to Google and I'm going to show you how to do a Google reverse image search by right? image. You upload your file. And it would find the image source. It will tell you flying machine model. And this is an image from the Gilded Age. It will tell you where it found it. So we're going to do a search. Find image source. And there's different sites that claim uh, to be kind of like the owners or have used the image before. So CNN, it's a news source outlet. I'm going to click on that one and then it would give me here where this image comes from. I didn't see just from here anything that it has been manipulated or anything that's been happening lately more with politics, with our former president, things like that. With history, I haven't seen so much, but then if it would have been manipulated before, you would find a story here that this image was altered or anything along those lines. So it's a good thing to do the reverse search to see if it's real or not. Going back to the lip guy, I have some additional information. I have a worksheet there, the SIF worksheet that you can use to actually fill by source. If you do this, I guarantee you, if you do this at least four or five times, after that, you won't have to use a template or go back to see the questions. It will be something kind of a filter in your brain every time you're consuming information on social media, reading the newspaper or a book, or when talking to someone. If you're interested in learning how to cite websites and other resources using a bibliographic software, move on to the next module, module five, where I will show you how to use Noodle, to Noodle tools. Thank you. Mm -hmm.